elections that are happening at the end of the week. So we will tell you at what time various sessions are. But we're starting off, first of all, talking about information management. We told you actually that a new website has been launched for the cluster, so we will hear more about that. We're also just basically hearing about new tools and products for information management that are going to really drive data um, driven decision making. And I suppose in a way to make the whole cluster more proactive rather than reactive. So Magnus Brun Rasmussen is the head of information management. A lot of you know Magnus. So Magnus, you're going to run us through this uh, first presentation. Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome to the session on information management. Uh, my name is Magnus Rasmussen, and I lead the uh, HQ IM team here in Rome. So uh, this session will give you a few insights to our work in 2020, and uh, then I'll share uh, some views on our approach to the, the world of information management in 2021, where I see, or we as a team, see a significant change or shift uh, towards data uh, and, uh, and the use of data for, for informed analysis. So let's, let's have a look at the, the next slides and, and how the numbers are looking. In uh, 2020, um, we had a significant workload in terms of operations uh, with a record of 16 operations throughout the year. Um, the team was, was put under significant pressure to, to deliver across, across all operations at the same time. We as an IM team here in Rome also support the, the 20 preparedness countries in 2020, which will be significantly uh, upgraded in, in 2021 to a much larger number. Furthermore, we uh, we had the COVID uh, response, uh, which led to a significant workload in terms of um, coordination meetings, uh, data collection for our cargo entry maps, etc. So all in all, uh, looking at these uh, multiple uh, small uh, numbers here, uh, it all adds up to quite a significant year for us as a team. Let's try and break it down a bit here, and uh, I'll do that on the next slide. So, uh, looking at 2020 in terms of, of documents published by type, uh, in total we, we published just over 2,000 documents. Uh, a significant number of meeting minutes, uh, maps, I think it's hidden down behind my small screen, uh, and situation updates. Uh, I think it's very important interesting to look at maps uh, and, and meeting minutes because it's one of the tools that we use very much to capture information and store it. Uh, however, it's proven less and less efficient in terms of uh, being a, a data repository. Uh, so we're looking very much to changing how we use minutes going forward uh, as being um, a, basically a data storage where we can extract information from. I'll look much more into that in 2021. So, so let's move on to the next slide. Looking at uh, 2020 uh, in terms of uh, documents published by operation, uh, once again, uh, South Sudan is, is one of the busier ones. Um, the same goes for uh, DRC, uh, where we are doing a lot of maps uh, and a lot of map exercises for for that country and operation in, in total. And then you'll see um, COVID um, here at 178. Um, I actually find that to be slightly misrepresenting because I think a much more work was put in terms of COVID. However, uh, what, you, what we recognized is that a lot of our work was actually done on data collection for existing documents. So we were basically just updating information available uh, through our mapping of, of entry points uh, and, and COVID restrictions. I'll show you that in a second, but just looking at the different pages and how much attention they, they got, let's let's have a look at the next page. So, so where are people looking? Uh, again, no surprise, a lot of focus on our COVID response uh, on a global level. Uh, a few uh, top hitters in terms of countries is DRC, uh, with a lot of focus on maps, um, South Sudan, etc., and, and Yemen uh, as being one of the, the, some of the top hitters. I think it's very interesting, though, to, to look at the, the, the COVID response and what was, what was actually the interest of people. 
and the interest was very much this map, which is is one of the first sort of attempts from an IAM perspective to to uh, to capture data and present it in a in a different manner that we normally do. It's called the CEPU or the Kaku Entry Point Update. I think a lot of you have seen it before. Quite an interesting approach to showing you know what countries and regulations are applicable for each country and operation, um, and quite a success uh, for the information management team last year. So in terms of uh, another top hitter, which we always see, and it wasn't even on the statistics because we run uh, separate numbers for this, is the Logistics Capacity Assessment, or the LCA. With more than 600,000 views, it's one of those tools that is always used a lot uh, by all our partners across. And it's one of those tools that we look to incorporate uh, much more in how we work with data going forward. Uh, but yeah, sharing the numbers here, 21 countries represented almost 50% of the views last year. So I think it shows the interest uh, for some specific operations. So the 2021 uh, approach, uh, and this is just a small teaser because I really hope to see you all on uh, Thursday where we're doing a dedicated session on this uh, concept of data-driven decision-making uh, and what we could see as the future of information management. So it's basically a, a different approach to how we work with information, um, where everything is currently stored very much in Word documents. We see uh, a significant shift to, to use of data and, and the modalities to extract it and apply it going forward. Us as a team and information management team here in Rome have access to Log IE. Uh, which my colleagues will present uh, as well. Rita, know, everybody knows that in terms of, of, uh, of cargo tracking. We have numbers on storage, we have numbers of finance, ops, etc. How do we bring all of this together? Um, and the thesis is, is quite uh, clear from our side, and it's, it's changing the use of data from being reactive in terms of reporting, etc., which we see a lot right now, to make, it, uh, make use of it for proactive, uh, so decision making, or even predictive going forward. Um, so I really hope to, to see you all for, uh, for an open discussion on this, and I, really, I think it could be very interesting to, to talk about how we intend to layer data to make informed decision making. So uh, that's what she said. Lastly, I'll just share a quick uh, view here. And this is basically one of the ways that we see it all come together. And that is our new website. So here it is, uh, or a small teaser of it. I'll just uh, quickly uh, go through a few things. It's basically the user experience I'm showing you guys here. Uh, much easier access to to um, to the different features, uh, much easier to navigate, much better layout. You'll see here in the South Sudan page, it's a standstill map in the left corner. The whole idea is actually that it will become a log IE map, uh, so an interactive and live map that works uh, going forward. We will do much more of this uh, on Thursday once I, I give you the grand tour, but this is just to give you a bit of a, a, a look into to the new website and the layout of it. On a technical perspective, we're using Drupal 8 slash 9 for improved performance and also improved security. Uh, we look very much at a design structure that allows us uh, for connection and integration with other logistics uh, cluster tools, Log IE, Vita, the LCA. So again, we're talking about layering data here and presenting to people in a much easier manner. And lastly, um, and this is a, a bit of a dream from our side, is to to say that this has also been developed with intent to to have a, a logistics cluster app up and running later this year, where you see direct interaction between the website and the app. So much more to come, but uh, I hope to see you guys on Thursday. I'm sure I'm already running short on time, so I'll make this very quick. What we're basically uh, going to ask on Thursday is uh, using data to support informed decision making, uh, current versus uh, future data collection and utilization of the logistics cluster. Uh, the digital transformation of the logistics cluster, new tools and integrated solutions uh, provide, providing better support to partners in the field. I think that's very, very important that we bring this data and our findings to the people who need it. Uh, which are our partners. And lastly here, you know, what are the challenges uh, that we face, but also that you face in terms of working with data? 
So I'm gonna we're gonna share a bit few of best practices, but also a few hard earned mistakes, um, so that we hope people don't uh, repeat them. I think that's it from my side today. Um, I think I went over time, so I'll I'll stop from now. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Magnus. Somebody says on Menti the website looks.